Hi folks, this is your practice problems video on reflections. So the first problem that you see right on your screen right here, I actually did a lot of examples very similar to this in the examples video on transformation. So I'm actually gonna leave this one blank. If you want to try this one, you can. Um, but really what I wanna focus on are these visual uh, reflections, right, and actually kind of drawing some of these shapes, okay? So uh, let's go ahead and jump into it here, okay? So, okay, this, uh, in this problem, we're going to take these shapes and we're going to perform the following reflections, okay? So step one when you're doing this is you have to draw where the actual mirror is, Okay, so that is whatever line they give you here. Okay, so in this first one, that line is the x axis, which is pretty easy for us to identify, right? It's right here. I'm doing my best to draw that. So that's my mirror. Okay, that's the line that I'm reflecting over. Okay, now. Normally, if we were doing this physically, like together, um, I would show you two different ways to do this. Um, but one of those ways involves this uh, this stuff called patty paper, which is almost like wax paper. Um, so I may try to kind of talk you guys through how you would do that if you're a really visual person uh, and you don't love like the counting method, which is what I'm going to show you first. Um, it was difficult for me to figure out how to show you that um, visually, but I'm going to do uh, the best I can with it. Okay. But I'm going to show you the counting method here first. Okay. So here I'm taking this shape and I'm reflecting it over the x-axis, okay? And the important thing about reflections is that the shape has to be the same distance away from the mirror on both sides. So the method I'm gonna show you first is called the counting method, okay? Where you wanna draw your line of reflection in, like I already have here in pink, and then take each individual point and count what's the distance between that point and the mirror. Right, so here the the easiest way for me to get from point A down to my mirror, my x axis, is to count straight down. So this is one, two, three units down, which means that I have to go the same distance to figure on the other side of the mirror to figure out where my new point A is going to reside. So one, two, three. So that means my new point A is here. Right, uh, and I'm going to label it with a, and it's a prime because it's my new point. Okay, so that's the counting method, right? So you kind of want to start with the point you're trying to move, count how many spaces you would need to take, you would need to go in order to get to the mirror, and then move the same distance on the other side of the mirror. Okay, so here point D is five units above the mirror, so I need to go straight down to the mirror and count five units below the mirror. One, two, three, four, five. So my new point D, D prime is here. W is here, it's four units away from the mirror. So I'm gonna go down one, two, three, four. Now I've hit my mirror and I'm gonna keep going four more spaces. One, two, three, four. Okay, so this is W prime. And then M, similar thing, but it's five units away. So uh, up here, I'm gonna count one, two, three, four, five. I've hit my mirror and I'm gonna go down five more spaces. One, two, three, four, five. Okay, so M prime is right there. So now I can take these points and connect them. Actually, hold on, I'm gonna do this with my, I'm gonna do this with my cami line tool. So again, I can, I can get slightly 
straighter lines when I do it with my line tool. So there, one, two, three, and four. So there is my shape. So you can see that it's the exact same shape, just flipped, okay? And one thing I want you to notice is that now W is closer, is, is above point M, right, in the new one, right? Because it's not about, it's not about like which point is above or which point is below, like especially when you're looking at things this way. Um, it's all about keeping the distance between the mirror and the the points uh, the same for each like for each letter. Okay, so uh, give me one moment. Uh, I'm gonna see if I can turn my webcam on, and I'm gonna try to show you all how to do this using like a tracing method. All right. So give me one sec. I'll be right back. All right, hi everybody. So I turned my webcam on because I want to try to show you how you could do this using um, like a tracing method because um, I know some people don't love the counting method. So I'm going to do my best here to show you what I'm doing. It's a little bit difficult because what I'm essentially going to do is take like a small piece of paper like this and put it up against my screen right? And like trace the shape um, and, and the line of reflection and then do some actual flipping. So um, we'll see how this goes, okay? Um, so very first thing, no matter which method you're using, is you have to draw your line of reflection in there. So my line of reflection for this second one is y equals negative one. Okay, whenever you see y equals a number, okay, that is a horizontal line. Okay, whenever you see x equals a number, like the next one, that is a vertical line. Okay, so this uh, line of reflection here for this problem is at y equals negative one. So it's a horizontal line where y equals negative one, which is right here. Okay, so I'm gonna draw my mirror right here, okay? So now I'm gonna attempt to show you like how to do this with a trace method, okay? So basically, I have my like my page here. Okay, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this up against my screen and I'm going to trace two things. I'm going to use the paper and like cover, like I'm literally taking it like this and I'm covering the shape on my screen. Okay, and I'm going to trace two things. I'm going to trace the shape with the individual points and I'm also going to trace the, um, I'm also going to trace the the mirror the line of reflection okay so i actually need to grab a pen that's a little bit now here's the thing please be careful if you're doing this with your computer screen uh, and give yourself a piece of paper that's big enough so that you aren't going to accidentally like write on your computer screen okay so basically i'm going to take this page okay and i'm going to trace it right uh and then i'll show you like what it looks like when you take it off okay so i'm here on my screen okay i'm kind of filling in where the points are and it doesn't have to be beautiful like it can be a rough like you're gonna see mine and it'll be a rough sketch okay so here's my shape okay but then i also have to draw in where the line of reflection is Okay, so I'm going to draw that on here and then I'm going to draw the line of reflection. Okay, so it looks like this. All right. Okay, so now what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to take it and I'm actually going to physically flip it. And I have some writing on the back of mine, but you can, like, you, it's really difficult to see through this with the pen that I used. Um, but I can trace it with a slightly darker like marker um and then it'll be easier to see like on the other side what I'm actually 
like tracing. Okay. So you can kind of see that. See, it kind of bleeds through, right? You can see the, the actual like shape that I drew. Okay. So what I'm going to do with this is I'm going to line this up on top of my shape and then I'm physically going to flip it. And since I'm reflect, you want to flip it in the same direction that, um, that your line of reflection is. So since my line of reflection goes like this. I'm going to take it and flip it over that line like this. Okay, so that my shape is kind of upside down. Okay, so I'm literally taking my shape and flipping it like this. Okay, so kind of, it's almost like you're taking it and folding it. Right, so flip it physically over. And then what I'm going to do is put my shape, okay, I'm going to put my shape back on, oops, sorry. So once I've flipped it, I'm gonna take my shape and put it back. Oops, sorry, I keep flipping this the wrong way, okay? So I'm gonna take it and put it back onto my original shape, right? So I'm taking it and kind of putting it upside down and I wanna make sure that I line up my original line of reflection with on like that I drew on the original picture with my new line of reflection that I can see on my <clears throat> like on my page okay so I'm going to take this and once I do that I can kind of see on my screen where these points are supposed to go like where the new points are supposed to go okay so I'm going to plot I can't obviously hold the, the paper up to the screen and also plot these um, at the same time. So I kind of know where these are where these points are supposed to go. So I'm gonna plot them, but I got where these points go from my uh, from my my traced paper. Okay. Um, Okay, so these four points that you see on the screen right here are my new points, right? Uh, so I'm going to connect those here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22, 23, 24, 25, 26, 27, 28, 29, 30, 31, 32, 33, 34, 35, 36, 37, where the line of reflection divides the new like weird shape exactly in half. Okay, like that's how you'll know that you did the um, that you did the tracing correctly and the flipping correctly. Okay, so remember, I took my shape when I had it originally, and I flipped it in the direction that. So basically, like I took my fingers, put them on top of the line of reflection, and flipped it that way. Okay, so that that way I knew I flipped it in the right spot. If my line of reflection was going like this, like vertical, I would take it and I would flip it this way. Right? Okay, so um, I want you all to try um, this third one right here uh, in whichever, using whichever method like works best for you and makes the most sense to you, either using the count method, which I did in that first one, or using the, the paper flip method. Right. So try that out. I'm going to put the answer on the screen here um, and then uh, check back with me to see if you did it correctly. All right, folks. So you can see on the right side of your screen that I have my new shape drawn in. OK, so remember that X equals negative three is a vertical line. OK, whenever you have X equals a number, that's a vertical line. So I had to find where X was equal to negative three, which is right here. And I drew a vertical line. OK, so that's my mirror. And then just for my own ease of doing this, I did it with the count method. So W was one space to the right of my mirror. So my new W had to be one space to the left. Same thing with S, one space to the right, one space to the left. My original I was two spaces to the left, so my new I had to be two spaces to the right. And then similar thing with P. So I drew my new shape in, and what you can kind of see is that now if you look at it as like a whole shape, uh, and I'm going to outline this in like 
something like this. Okay. Um, whoops. So I'm going to outline this here. So you can kind of see that if you outline the whole thing as like a kind of weird looking crazy shape, that that line of reflection there, that mirror, divides that kind of weird looking shape directly in half, okay? So give me a second to clear my screen because we're gonna look at where, uh, when you have these drawn already, where you put the line of reflection, all right? So I'll see you guys back here in just a second. All right, folks, so here uh, in these examples, I have the original shape uh, which is in black in all of these, and the new shape, which is there in blue, already drawn. And the only thing that I don't have is my mirror, right? Where is the line of reflection, okay? So I think the best way to do these, if you're a really visual person, is again, kind of thinking of this as one big shape and seeing like, where could you put a mirror that like divides this weird big shape if you include the blue and the black shapes together as like one big shape, where could you put the mirror where it divides that weird shape exactly in half? So for this one, it's pretty easy to see, right? Because it's very symmetric around a line that's already drawn, which is the X axis. Okay, so there's my mirror. Um, so the line of reflection down here is the X axis, okay? Um, For some others, it's a little bit trickier because the line that you're drawing isn't actually already there. Um, but if you're not sure you're doing it correctly, the best thing to do is like just kind of draw some reflection lines on there and see if it looks like it's dividing that shape in half. Okay, another way you can look at this is using the counting method. So if you look, for example, in this one on the uh, on the the right hand side of the screen here, right? You can see that V and V prime are in the same spot. So what that means is that that line of reflection has to go through that point. Point T and point T prime are this far apart. So I kind of want a line of reflection to go straight through the middle of that, right? U and U prime are this far apart. So I kind of want a line of reflection to go straight through the middle of that. Right, okay, so you can kind of see where I'm going with this probably, that the line of reflection here is gonna cut straight through the middle of this shape, okay? So it'll look something like this. And then now the question becomes, well, what is that line, okay? So this, even the, this pink line here is still a line, right? Like you can put little arrows on the end of it, Right, so it has an equation, like a y equals mx plus b equation. Okay, so I have to look and see, well, what is my slope and what is my y-intercept? So I have y equals something times x plus something else. So my y-intercept of this line is right here. It's zero, so I'm not gonna add anything. So this would be like plus zero. Right, this value is zero for this one. And then my slope is, I go down one over one, so negative one over one. So my slope here is negative one. So you can just put a negative sign in front of that x. So that is the line y equals negative x, okay? All right, so there's two others here. I want you to try these two and see if you can figure out where the line of reflection is. And then I'll see you back here in just a moment. All right, everybody, so check your answers against mine here. So my line of reflection for this kind of star looking, weird star looking shape uh, is y equals two. Okay, the way I figured that out was I kind of looked at this shape as a whole and just tried to divide it in half uh, straight through the middle. And the pink line that I drew on here does that. Right? It's like my perfect fold line that I could take that shape as a whole, fold it in half along that line, uh, and it would be a perfect matchup, right? So whenever you have a horizontal line that's not the x-axis, your equation is always y equals some number, okay? Um, so here, I just had to look at, well, what's the y value of that pink line? And it's y equals two, right? Because I can go up one, two, 
right? And there's, uh, there's my line there. Okay, so my line of reflection here is y equals 2. For this other one here, my line of reflection, you can see it there in pink, okay? This one, uh, I kind of use the counting method. So I drew a connection line between a couple of these points, so like u and u prime, h and h prime. And I knew that my line of reflection had to go straight through um, the middle of both of those lines, and it had to be perpendicular, right, when it goes straight through um, in order for the fold to be like a perfect fold. So when I did that, I ended up with this pink line right here, okay, which is the line y equals x. See, the y-intercept is zero, and the slope is one, right, up one over one, okay? All right, so I think I've got one more for you. Give me a second to, one or two more for you. Give me a moment to clear my screen off, and then we're going to do a couple more different types of examples here. All right, folks, so here's the last couple of reflection problems here. So this one, number four, is just giving you two shapes and is asking you to draw the line of reflection. Okay, uh, and label the new points. So there's no coordinate grid here. So you kind of just have to draw where you would put the mirror, where you would put the middle of this one. And so I'm gonna draw a straight line and then I think I'm gonna need to move it a little bit because um, it doesn't look like it's quite in the middle there. Okay, so there's my mirror, right? The tricky part about this question is labeling the points correctly. Okay, so if you remember in the last video on translations, when we labeled this this uh, pentagon, the new pentagon, that the point B ended up way over here because we were taking the whole shape and moving it. Point E ended up here. It'll look a little different when you're doing it as a reflection, right? Because point B here has to be the same distance away from B prime over here. Right, so instead of point E being right here, like in the last one, this is going to be point B prime. Right, you're trying to line these points up exactly and have them match. Right, so you can almost think of this uh, this pink line, the line of reflection, as a perfect like fold line. Okay, so A is still going to be at the top here, but point B is now going to be closer to the reflection line and point E is going to be way over here, farther away from the reflection line. And similar thing for C and D, right? C prime is going to be closer to the reflection line than D prime is, okay? All right, now the very last question here is kind of a like lead into what we're doing next week almost. It's kind of like a bonus type question, but it says describe a reflection of this square that would map the square onto itself, meaning that it wouldn't change position at all, okay? So I know that I'm gonna take it and I'm gonna reflect it. So if I draw like a reflection line here at the x-axis, my new shape is gonna be down here, right? Which is not what I want, okay? Um, if I And then I would have a similar issue if I did say the y-axis, but, one thing you can do is reflect the shape over a line that cuts it straight in half, okay? Because what would happen is this point here would end up over here. Like these two points would switch places, right? And the same thing with these two points down here. This one on the left would end up over here on the right, and this one on the right would end up over here on the left. So the coordinate points have moved around, but the actual physical shape has not changed location, right? So I can draw one straight through this way. I can also draw a horizontal one straight through, and I could also do this on the diagonal, right? Not drawn very well by me, but I could draw a diagonal line straight through, okay? So all of these lines are lines of symmetry, right? It takes the shape and draws uh, and, and cuts it exactly in half, okay? So, uh, so the description here would be any line of reflection that is also a line of symmetry, okay? i.e. divides the shape into 
equal parts. Okay. Or right, two, I'm going to say congruent parts, actually. Okay. So any, any line of reflection that's also a line of symmetry would map the shape onto itself. Okay, and that's true for any shape, not just the, the squares that you have here, okay? All right, y'all, so I know that video was a little bit long, uh, but that was your video on reflections. You've got one more on rotations. So I'll see y'all in the next one. Bye.